All right, welcome back. It is Friday, meaning it is time for some power rankings. But before I get into it, I just wanna say thank you guys so much uh, for 1,000 subscribers. I still uh, cannot believe it. The amount of support and positive feedback and everything has been amazing to this point. Um, I am super grateful for each and every one of you and thank you guys so much to everyone who's been supporting my content and providing helpful feedback and all that sort of stuff these past few months. Uh, I'm gonna keep the content coming as long as I've got people who are watching it and enjoying it. So uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for 1,000 subscribers. Now to get into my power rankings, uh, I'm gonna be breezing through the bottom two rows a little bit quicker, uh, just because in general, a lot of the teams uh, near the bottom are kind of struggling with the same overall thing. So I don't wanna be beating a dead horse and uh, if you're at all curious with the way that I do these power rankings, uh, I update this list every single day. I just only show it to you guys every single Friday once a week. So after every single day of Dota, I go through, I update it, make my changes until I'm happy with it uh, based on whether or not a team did very well or poorly or whatnot. Uh, I rank the teams based on how well or how strong I think they are. Uh, sometimes some teams are playing very, very well, but don't have a good record to show for it. And so I'll have them a little bit uh, higher up than some teams that have a bad record but aren't playing well, stuff like that. So anyways, without further ado, uh, let us start off the list with number 48, staying, staying in the same spot as last week. We have SG Esports. Uh, they go 0-2 in the week, lost to Hikori and Noping. No real improvement there for SG. Uh, number 47, dropping down two spots from last week, we have Empire. Uh, Empire going 0-1. They lost that series to Mind Games. Uh, things are continuing to go south for them. They're number 47. Uh, number 46, despite not playing any matches this week, they dropped down two spots, and that is Arkosh. Uh, again, they dropped down two spots mainly because they got passed, but things have continued to get worse for Arkosh as the season goes on. Number 45, dropping down six spots, uh, we have Cool Guys, who uh, have played two series this week. They lost to both uh, Team Secret and Tundra 2-0. And Cool Guys, I had a little bit higher. I had them at number 39 last week uh, because it was a team that I was giving the benefit of the doubt to. Uh, the fact that they were playing in Western Europe, which is one of the toughest regions, and they put up a good fight in that series against OG. I thought, you know, maybe there was a potential to turn things around at least a little bit. And since then, they've kind of fallen into their old patterns and things have not looked very good for them. So they dropped down six spots. At number 44, moving up three spots, going one and one on the week, we have Mind Games, who win that series against Empire, as previously mentioned. They take a game off of Puck Champ, in which they look very good. And so overall, a pretty good week for Mind Games, and they move up a little bit. They're still likely going to get relegated, but overall, something that they can point to and say that they had a good week at. At number 43, dropping two spots from last week, we have Phoenix, who went 0-3 in the past week. They are now 0-5. Uh, things are continuing to go south for Phoenix as they struggle to uh, find any sort of semblance of success. They do get a single game win over LBCS, but they let the series slip away from them, and so they're at number 43. At number 42, staying in the same spot from last week, we have Simply 2 based, who lost to Wildcard pretty badly. Uh, overall, they should be, they're at where around where they should be on the list. And at number 41 to round off the bottom row, moving up five spots from last week, TNC Predator with that nice win over uh, OB Neon. Now they do lose to Boom and SMG, but again, that nice win against OB Neon was one that impressed me a lot, and so I moved them up a little bit. Again, it doesn't take much to move up when you're so far closer to either end of the list, because again, a lot of these teams kind of struggling with the same thing. At number 40, narrowly escaping the bottom row, although they might find themselves there soon, we have Gambit, who goes 0-1 this week. They lost to Na'Vi 2-0. It was a pretty rough series, but again, Na'Vi playing very, very well. Number 39, dropping down one spot from last week, is Alliance. Uh, they go 0-1 this week. They lose to OG, which cemented their spot in the bottom two of the division, meaning they will be getting relegated. Um, they only drop one spot. Again, I feel like they're at where they should be on the board, and so they, stay at, they move down to number 39. At number 38, we have Hokori. And Hokori goes 1-0 uh, on the week. They beat SG Esports. Uh, they move up five spots to where they are right now. But again, it doesn't take all that much to move up on the board when you're this low. At number 37, we have Obi Neon dropping down four spots from last week. Uh, they go 0-2 this week. One of those losses being to T1, which, you know, losing to T1, there's no real shame in that. But that loss to TNC Predator, as previously mentioned, was one that really 
um, made me feel like OB Neon is really having a hard time. Uh, I was also giving them the benefit of the doubt. I had them at number 33 last week, despite the fact that they only had one series wins at that point, uh, just because they were playing well outside of the DPC. And I know that this is a DPC power rankings. I don't want to read too, too much into outside tournaments, which is why I didn't have them as high as maybe some other people would rate them. But uh, yeah, with them continuing to struggle against other teams in the region in the DPC format, I feel no... I, I don't really see how I can put them any higher than where they currently are. They are looking like one of the teams that's bound to be eliminated and move down to the lower division, which is a real shame because I do like OB Neon. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just kind of gone from bad to worse for them. At number 36, moving down two spots, we have No Ping. Uh, no Ping beats SG, but then lose, mo eh, loses to Na uh, Lava. Um, man, that was a lot tougher to say than I thought. So overall, not a whole lot of movement from No Ping, kind of playing to where they are on the board. At number 35, moving up two spots with a pretty impressive week, we have LBZS. Uh, they play four series and they win two of them, which sure is not amazing. But the two teams that they lost to were PSGLGD and Aster, who are shaping up to be probably the two strongest teams in the region at the moment. Um, and they take a series win over RNG, which again, you know, might shape up to be more of something to talk about the inconsistency of rng but at the end of the day lbzs gets that win you still need to be a pretty solid team to capitalize on uh, a team like rng having a bad day and so uh, they get that win they also beat phoenix and so overall a pretty good week for lbzs they are uh, at my number 35 spot at number 34, moving up two spots with that wing win over No Ping, we have Lava, who goes 1-0 and on the week. And rounding out the bottom two rows, we have probably one of the hardest teams to rank uh, in the entire um, DPC power rankings, and that is Black and Yellow, just because of how inconsistent they can be. Um, and in one series, they'll look really, really good and take down one of the best teams in the region, and then in the next one, they'll lose to Arkosh. And then they'll take a game off of Quincy Crew, but then they'll lose to four Zoomers in a really rough fashion. So again, Black and Yellow, one of the toughest teams to rank on the board just because of how hot and cold they seem to be. But they aren't having the best results either. They're, I think, one in five right now. So yeah, number 33 for me. Now moving into row number four, again, uh, trying to elaborate a little bit more with these teams and these picks. Uh, starting off dropping 14 spots, although they don't actually drop this many spots. I think they actually only dropped eight because in my last review, I accidentally had this team mixed up with eHome. Um, so they should have been 24th last week. They are instead in 18th. Now they dropped to 32nd, and that is Invictus Gaming. Um, Things have been pretty mediocre for Invictus Gaming. It seems that losing Kaka is proving to be a lot more of a loss than I think they were expecting. Um, they beat Phoenix this week, but again, most teams are beating Phoenix right now, and they lose to Vici Gaming, who also went through a pretty significant amount of roster changes. Um, and they have really not looked like the same IG whatsoever to this point. So again, they dropped technically 14 spots from last week, but that is just because of a mix-up. But regardless, they do drop quite a lot. And uh, again, in Invictus Gaming, they, they might miss out on the first major by the way that they're playing right now. We'll see how the next few weeks go. At number 31, dropping one spot from last week, we have Team Secret, who wins their only series of the week. It is against Cool Guys, which is why we don't see Team Secret shooting up the list at all. Um, and they do drop one spot despite winning the series just because they got passed. And for a lot of teams that either don't play or they win a series, but it's against one of the weaker teams and they still drop, that's likely the reason why it's just because they got passed. Um, uh, so yeah, all right, next up, number 30, dropping down three spots from last week, we have Vici Gaming. Uh, they go one and one on the week, they lose to PSG LGD, which again, no real shame in that, but they beat IG, they look good doing it, and at the time on the list, IG and Vici Gaming were actually opposite to where they are right now, and after that series, I just swapped them around, so... Uh, yeah, <laughs> next up on the list at number 29, we have Motivate. Uh, they only lose one series in this past week. It was to T1. They even take a game off of it. But considering they started off the season with a lot of expectation based on outside tournaments and the fact that they even started the DPC off 2-0, and oh, it has been a real downward spiral for Motivate. They have gone, they have lost now four consecutive series and they are just starting to lose a lot of steam. Uh, if there is a first major, they are not in contention for it anymore. And uh, yeah, it's been a pretty disastrous middle section of the season for Motivate so far. At number 28, we have Infamous uh, moving up, uh, actually staying in the same spot from last week with their one series win over Beast Coast. Um, 
very well played series they really felt like they really wanted that they were playing with a lot of passion a lot of skill and um yeah they take this one in three games but at the same time with infamous they don't move up to too much just because they did get passed by some other teams that were behind them initially um, but this win is definitely a big reason as to why they stay where they are uh, i feel pretty confident having them exactly where they are right now and it also speaks on a bit of the inconsistency with beast coast that i've been touching on a little bit you know beast coast is again one of the best teams in the region but they do have their downsides where they'll just lose a series like this every now and then. And so they should still make it to the major, this being Beast Coast I'm talking about. But again, playing on the inconsistency makes me a little bit more worried for Beast Coast than I am happy for Infamous. Now moving on to number 27, moving up four spots from last week with one series win this week, and that is Wildcard. Uh, they beat simply two base this week, which of course is not the biggest accomplishment, but it has been a slow, steady grind for Wildcard to get up to this point. Uh, after the first week, uh, after having very minimum expectations and losing that first series against Undying very, very badly, uh, you know, having that new roster throw together and a lot of players playing in new positions and whatnot, uh, I was a little bit worried for them. But ever since that first series loss, they have been 4-1 and one ever since. I think their only other loss being the Quincy Crew. Uh, they take that series over EG earlier. And again, it has been a slow, steady climb to number 27 for Wildcard. Very well deserved for them. They have been uh, a real treat to watch. And right now, they're in contention for a major spot in North America. They are tied with both Undying and Evil Geniuses at this point. So we'll have to see how that goes. At number 26, and the next two teams are two teams that I think I had maybe a little bit too high. And eventually just uh, the rest of the division kind of caught up to them and kind of showed me that they weren't as strong. So they do take some significant drops despite not playing all that much this past week. Uh, Kings, APU King of Kings from South America specifically, did not play any matches this week, but they dropped six spots to number 26. Um, again, they're playing pretty well, but it has me a little bit worried that they're not on par with some of the best teams in the region like Beast Coast, like Thunder Predator, and even Beast Coast having their weak moments like the loss against Infamous. But uh, I did move them down just because of that. And then four Zoomers also dropping down six spots. Uh, they lose to Evil Geniuses. And again, it just feels like even with the roster changes, they're still unable to overcome uh, the best teams in the region like Quincy Crew, like Undying, like Evil Geniuses that they've struggled to beat in the past. They still do not feel like they're that far, that, that close to beating them yet. And so for now, I feel like having them at number 25 is a pretty solid spot. Uh, they started off their season well. But since then, uh, it really feels like the better teams in the division had started to uh, show that they're just a step above four Zoomers to this point. Now, moving on to the top half of the board, starting off with number 24, moving up five spots, we have Ehome. And again, Ehome I had mixed up with Invictus last week, which is why uh, they're moving up despite the fact that they lost both of their series this week. Uh, they lose to both RNG and Aster. But all in all, I think they've had a pretty okay season so far. They should be in contention for a major spot. Again, China has four spots available for them. They've been playing pretty decently well, but again, a rough week for them. They are number 24. At number 23, dropping one spot from last week, we have Na'Vi. Uh, Na'Vi goes one and one, like I'd mentioned. Uh, they lose two to one to Team Spirit, and then they beat uh, Gambit. Notably in that series against... Uh, Team Spirit, I think, was the more impressive of the two. In game one, they take that game off of Spirit. They looked really, really good. And again, Spirit really made them work for that win. And in game three, it was a little bit closer as well. They kind of got stomping game two, but game three was pretty close. And it was very similar to their loss to Hellraisers as well, where Navi was playing really, really well, but they just couldn't quite get the win. And so... Again, just because they aren't able to get the win, I don't drop Navi down too much. I still think they're playing really, really good Dota, and they should still be one of the stronger teams in the region. I don't think they're making it to the major at this point, especially if VP starts getting back into shape. But again, they've been playing pretty damn well these past couple weeks. Now, moving up 10 spots to number 22 uh, with their one series win this week uh, over Team Liquid, that is Team Nigma. And for Team Nigma, it's been a slow, steady climb as well. They, of course, started their season off uh, going 0-3, two of those series with their stand-in Roman filling in for Miracle. Uh, but again, that reintroduction of Miracle in that first series against OG was not all that spectacular. But ever since then, they have been on a slow, steady climb back to a decent record. They started off 0-3. They are now currently 3-3. And, and that win over Liquid really just impressed me a lot. Uh, again, I didn't bump them up all that much in the past few weeks with those few wins because I really wanted to see more from them. And this is exactly what I was waiting for from them. This was a very good showing. Game 1 maybe was a little bit rough, but they made the, the adjustments to that exact same draft pretty much in Game 3 in 
and they beat Team Liquid with it. So all in all, I've been very impressed with them. We still don't know if they're making it to the major, but again, they've been playing much better Dota than they did in the first half, and they are definitely deserving of that number 22 spot uh, for the top teams currently. At number 21, moving up four spots, despite not playing very much at all this past week, um, they didn't play any games, that was Virtus Pro. And again, passing some teams like King of Kings and like four Zoomers who dropped out of the top 20, uh, and so Virtus Pro moves up despite not playing any matches at all. At number 20, moving up one spot from last week, we have Execration. And Execration does lose their only match of the week. They lose it 2-0 to T1. It is now back-to-back -back losses for Execration as well, but I'm not dropping them down yet. Uh, they've looked pretty good so far. They are two and three right now. So if we see more losses from them, they definitely will drop. But for now, I still think they're playing decently well. They need to turn things around. Going two and three after starting off two and one is not very good for them. And so again, they just need to turn things around. I'm worried about the rest of the tour for them, but I still have faith that they, they can maybe crack out a couple more wins to end off the season. So uh, yeah, they're my, they're my number 20 right now. At number 19, moving up nine spots. Um... I don't know if it's actually nine spots. They may have only moved up seven. I may have got that wrong because I thought they were 26 last week. But uh, that is Evil Geniuses. Um, this looks like a completely brand new team since the start of the new year. And I talked about this a little bit more in my North America review I posted just a bit before this one. Um, MSS standing in for Nightfall. And whether or not it is MSS coming in and making the difference or the team just overall gelling together much better or players that were rusty before like Jirax coming into shape or Arteezy finally having those Arteezy-like performances that doesn't include him getting cliffed. Uh, yeah, Evil Geniuses have looked like a brand new team. They take down Undying. They take down four Zoomers. They've looked fantastic and all in all very impressed with them. And now they are finally in contention for that major slot that two weeks ago we thought was way too far out of the reach at this point. So again... Uh, it's been a nice climb for EG. At number 18, dropping down one spot from last week despite not playing. Uh, Fnatic, again, just the case of being passed. Uh, they have not played any matches this past week. And then at number 17, dropping down four spots with that surprising loss to Infamous, we have Beast Coast. Uh, again, Beast Coast, I still have it as high as number 17, which I think is pretty good. They're still one of the best teams in the region, but I am just a little bit afraid about that inconsistency. If they do win their next couple series and end out the season pretty strongly, or if they manage to overcome beating Thunder Predator, who is undefeated to this point, I will move them up for sure. But as of right now, Beast Coast really has me a little bit worried. As we've seen in the past, they can look pretty good in their own region, and then they make it to a major, and they struggle a little bit. And right now, they're already showing signs of struggling a little bit against some of the other teams in this division. Uh, I, I even remember, I think in my first power rankings, I had Infamous around the same spot on the board, and people were talking about how Infamous was way too high, and now they've gone ahead and beat Beast Coast. And I'm not trying to use that as some sort of excuse as to, you know, going all out and saying what a weaker team is better than they actually are, and then they win and it justifies it, but, you know, it's just funny. Now moving up into the top two rows, which generally is where you want to be. By the way that the system works, if you are in the top two rows, you should technically be a major team, uh, just based on the fact that there are different amount of slots available for different regions, uh, and the fact that I account for different regions being tougher than others, this should work out to be a bunch of teams that should be heading to the major. Starting off with a team dropping down five spots, which is definitely not what you want to be seeing heading into a major, if we have one, uh, we have RNG. And RNG goes 2-1 and one in the week. They have a pretty good week. They take down E-Home. They take down Phoenix, which again isn't the most impressive win. But it's that loss to LBZS that really, really puts a pit in my stomach. Uh, that win over E-Home was pretty close too. Um, but again, it just really speaks on the inconsistency of RNG. Maybe I was rating them a little too high last week. Uh, God King is a very, very feast or famine type of carry player. When he's on, he looks really good. But at the same time, when he's struggling, it's a big reason as to why the whole team starts to struggle as well. And for now, I have them at number 16. At number 15, and probably the biggest drop on the board, other than the IG one, which ended up just being a mix-up by me, uh, we have dropping from number 3 all the way to number 15 right now, and that is Undying. Um, Undying has had a very, very rough first week in 2022. They were undefeated heading into the new year, 4-0, uh, and and then they lose to Quincy Crew, and then they followed that up by getting demolished by Evil Geniuses. And again, not to take any credit away from Evil Geniuses, they're obviously playing very, very well, but Undying, it really just gives me that feeling that they're still not able to overcome what they were struggling with last year, and that is beating the other very, very good teams in the region. If you recall correctly, 
They finished third place in both regional leagues last year, and they missed out on both majors because they weren't able to consistently beat teams like EG and Quincy Crew. And although I was expecting they would overcome that this year, it really feels like they're still struggling with that. And for that reason, I have them down at number 15. At number 14, uh, going one and one on the week, um, we have OG. They lose two to one in Team Tickles in a very, very hard fought match for that second spot in the, or that second seed in the division. Um, a very, very good series. They do beat Alliance later on in the week, which leads me to believe that, you know, even though beating Alliance isn't all that bad, I really feel like OG is in the right spot on the board right now. And so they stay at number 14. At number 13, dropping down one spot for the sake of being passed because they actually win their only series of the week, uh, we have Tundra. Uh, Tundra had a really rough uh, week two and three this season, uh, but they've started to turn things back around. Again, they beat Cool Guys, which isn't exactly the most impressive thing ever, but they're getting those wins nonetheless. They're starting to come back into form. And again, not to rely too much on tournaments outside of the DPC, but in that OGA Dota pit, they made it all the way to the Grand Finals, and then they beat Team Spirit. They look pretty good, and so I'm just really expecting Tundra to do great things from here. Uh, I can't really have them any higher than 13th in a DPC power rankings because, again, week two and three were really, really rough, uh, rough, and they're starting to just finally turn things around. But again, uh, they've been playing quite well as of late. Now moving on to number 12, moving up three spots despite losing their only series this week, that being Hellraisers. Uh, Hellraisers passing a few teams that, again, dropped out of the top, uh, like Undying and like Beast Coast. Um... But despite losing, they only lost their series. Uh, their only loss so far being the one they lost this week, and that was to Puck Champ, who um, has been playing very well. They even picked a Techies in the second game, which was probably hell to play against for Hellraisers. Uh, all in all, uh, I... I'm still pretty confident in Hellraisers. They've been playing very, very well. I'm not going to punish them too, too much for this one loss, especially to a team like Puck Champ, who's been playing super, super well. But if the losses start to pile up for them, they will be seeing some movement down the board. Again, they only move up this week despite their loss because of some teams like RNG, like Undying, like Beast Coast dropping out of the top 13. Following that, at number 11, moving up five spots from last week with that impressive win over OG, we have Tickles. Again, very hard-fought match. Um, I think in Game 3 and Game 1 were their best showings. Oh, sorry. Not Game 1, but the only other game that they had won before Game 3, sorry. Um, they look like a team that has really come out of nowhere, I, like in the sense that I don't think anyone was really expecting them to, them to do this well in Western European's upper division, and it has been a real treat to watch. They've been playing very clean Dota, very fun Dota to watch, and if we don't end up having a major, this will probably be the team that struggles the most or will have fought the hardest to get here that will end up getting snuffed whatever the analogy is I'm looking for, because, man, they've been playing super, super well, and it'd be a damn shame if they weren't able to show it off at the major. So, again, moving up to number 11, moving up five spots, uh, I've been very impressed with Tickle so far. And when Tickles and OG played against each other, I had them right next to each other, actually. I think it was number 14 and 15 on the power rankings, and then when they played, I just, whoop, swapped them around. Um, but then again, with more teams dropping out, Tickles ends up moving up. Uh, number 10, now moving into my number 10 spot, moving up 14 spots. And again, due to the fact that I brought in the Chinese teams a little bit late, I didn't have very many teams near the very bottom or any teams near the very top. I wanted to see a little bit more from them. And that is a big reason as to why we've seen Aster jump up so much. Again, they move up 14 spots to number 10. Uh, after losing their first series to PSGLGD, in which they even looked very, very solid, they took a game off of PSGLGD, uh, they have yet to drop a game since. Uh, they beat teams like... Uh, Vici Gaming, LBZS, and eHome, they have looked absolutely solid. And again, their only series loss so far being to LGD in which they took a game. And so Aster looking fantastic right now, looking like one of the best teams in the world and the region so far. And at number nine, rounding off our second row, uh, we have T1 moving up one spot. They go 2-0 in the week, a nice win over Motivate, a nice win over Execration. It's going to be a slow, steady climb back into the top row for them. Again, teams near the very, very top are playing exceptional Dota, have yet to drop a series-type Dota. And so for T1 to crack back into that, they're going to need to start showing that consistency once again. A match that I'm really, really excited for is their matchup against Boom, which actually just takes place in just a few hours from now. And uh, we'll have to see how that goes because we'll get to see what is supposed to be likely the two strongest teams of the region clashing. And so I'm really, really excited for that one. Now moving into the top row. Before I get into it, I just want to say if you guys are enjoying the video so far, feel free to like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. Uh, we just passed a thousand subscribers. So thank you guys so much for that. Again, uh, I just want to throw that in there before we get into it. 
Starting off with number eight, uh, dropping down two spots from last week despite winning both of their series, uh, we have SMG. Uh, SMG drops two spots by the case of being passed by a couple teams, but also the fact that they do win their two series, but it was against the two lowest seeded teams in the division, OB Neon and TNC, and it took them three games to win those series as well. So not the most convincing wins. They are wins nonetheless. No real reason for me to knock them out of the top eight so far, but again, they do drop down because they get passed. Uh, at number seven, dropping three spots, uh, we have Team Liquid suffering their first loss of the DPC. And again, see, they were fourth place before, now they're seventh. It doesn't take very much to drop. Um, it was still a hard-fought series against Team Nigma. They had their bright moments in both game one and three, I thought. And uh, still one of the better teams. They are the only team so far in Western Europe that is secured to make it to the major, if there is a major. And so, yeah, with that one loss, I'm not too, too worried about Team Liquid. Keeping them in number seven, I think, is pretty reasonable. And uh, yeah. Now at number six, moving up three spots, we have Puck Champ, who goes two and zero on the week. Uh, they do drop a game to Mind Games, but they win the series nonetheless, which was a little bit alarming. But then they, of course, win the series to reassure us. Uh, and then they beat Hellraisers 2-0, which was a very, very well played series by Puck Champ. Um, they are looking like one of the better teams in the DVC right now. Again, touching on something that Fear talked about when casting that game is that Puck Champ, when they are allowed to play the strategy that they know very well, when they are allowed to have a draft that they are very familiar with, they play some of the best Dota in the region. But in other games where maybe teams start to figure out their drafting style or their strategy, like Mind Games did in that series, Puck Champ can struggle a little bit to close out series. And so Puck Champ is playing very, very well in the DPC right now. I am a little bit worried for them when it comes to the major slots, but I can't punish them just because I'm a little bit worried about it. Uh, they are playing some exceptional Dota right now, and so they find themselves at number six. At number five, moving up three spots as well, uh, making their mark on the DPC as we had expected, we have PSG LGD. Uh, they beat LBZS and Vici Gaming this week, so not exactly the toughest opponents, but they are playing their usual, very clean style of Dota. Every single player playing fantastically. Jin Q having some highlight reel moments pretty much every game, every series. And uh, it's going to be a slow study crime, for, again, for PSGLD, PSGLGD to make it up this board just because of the fact that they haven't played as many series. But I would not be surprised if they end up in the top two, maybe even number one by the end of the season because it's just, it's PSGLGD. That's just what they do. So, uh, yeah, as for right now, they're number five. Again, I just need to see a few more games from them. But I think that having them at number five is pretty reasonable. At number four, moving up three spots as well, we have Quincy Crew, who, of course, uh, took down the only other undefeated team in the region at the time, being Undying. They then beat Black and Yellow, so they go 2-0 and in the week. They do drop a game to Black and Yellow, but I think that they did a very, very good job of recuperating. Uh, they've play, been playing fantastically. All of the changes that they made to their roster in the offseason seem to be paying off. Uh, Kezu playing more of a leadership role in that offlane position is just playing fantastically and he's being a real pain in the ass to every single safe laner in the region um they have yet to play against evil geniuses which by the way eg has been playing as of late might end up being their toughest competition of the tour so we'll have to see how it goes but as of right now quincy crew has been playing fantastically um and yeah they're they're my number four team right now at number three, moving up two spots despite not playing any games since my last power rankings, uh, that is Thunder Predator. And again, they don't play any games, but they looked really dominant in the series that they have. Uh, they passed on Dying and Liquid, who have dropped out of the top five, and that's why we find them at number three. At number two, staying in the same spot from last week with their single series win over TNC Predator this week, uh, that is Boom. Uh, Boom has yet to even drop an individual game right now. Uh, they have looked fantastic. They have looked like a force to be reckoned with. And keep in mind, again, these guys were supposed to be lower division, but because of a match fixing scandal amongst another team in the upper division before the season started, these guys were granted a second chance at the upper division. And now they're looking like one of the best teams in the world. They're playing fantastically. Each and every single one of their players is playing super, super clean, super well-practiced Dota. Their ability to come back in games where they're falling behind is super impressive. And again, I'm really excited for that series that they have up against T1 in just a few hours from now, which leads me to my number one spot, Team Spirit, winning their only series of the week against Navi 2-1. to one. And I think I said it in my first power rankings that I did on the new year, um, where I wasn't going to put uh, lower not Spirit down until we saw them bleed a little bit. And some people might point to that one game that they dropped to Navi as them showing a little bit of weakness. You know, Boom hasn't even dropped an individual game yet. 
but they really made Na'Vi work for that. And despite playing from behind for three quarters of the game, Team Spirit played with exceptional coordination, um, despite having a bit of a uncharacteristic uh, or a bit of a quirky draft. They made it look fantastic. Their map movement was fantastic. And again, despite the fact that Na'Vi takes that first game, it took them over an hour and they really made them work for it. Na'Vi was just playing very, very well in that game and just really didn't want to lose it. So uh, yeah, that is my power rankings for January 14th, 2022. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think I'm overrating a team, underrating a team? You guys can let me know all about that in the comments down below as always. Again, thank you so much for 1,000 subscribers and I will talk to you guys tomorrow with another video.